I presented this talk on the generation of a segment of uh, intestine uh, using a scaffold uh, in an animal model. Basically, the, the uh, operation in these animals where we create a structure so that the cells of the animal, the, their own cells, can grow into the structure and generate an additional piece of intestine. Very much like uh, when a lizard loses part of the tail that grows back, so we're providing uh, basically the structure where the cells can go and start to reorganize the, uh, the different uh, you know, components of the intestine. There are diseases where people lose intestinal function, either trauma or uh, either some other uh, diseases like inflammatory bowel disease or congenital diseases in children where they have no uh, intestine or very short portion of the intestine. The problem with that is that they cannot absorb sufficient nutrients and they basically to survive they have to be fed via a, a, a catheter in a, in a blood vessel to, uh, with TPN. So with this particular uh, approach what we hope to do is to create, uh, to elongate the intestine so that they can be using patients to elongate their intestine as well and they can absorb enough nutrients to be off TPN and go back to normal life. I'm a transplant surgeon, I've been doing intestinal transplant, so I've seen a lot of these patients that lose the bowel and one option is transplanting the bowel, taking the intestine from another human being and we have done this from cadavers as well as from live donors. The problem with intestinal transplant is a big operation and uh, the patient has to be on immunosuppression for the rest of their life. There is risk of infections, rejection. So to say that they go back to a normal life is a little bit optimistic. There is obviously, uh, you can save their life with intestinal transplant, but it is not a forever solution. It's more of a few years kind of uh, solution. And when you're dealing with little children, of course you want to find something better than that. The idea is that creating a scaffold that where the, the intestine regenerates itself into the structure basically becomes normal intestine. So the intestine is, becomes part of the intestine of the same patient, made with its own cells. There is no issue of rejection. It's not really a transplant. The transplant is only of a, of a structure to allow the cells to, to grow into. And so, and so the idea is that you have a fully regenerated intestine or part of the intestine that replaces or increases the size of the previous intestine. This was done in rats, in a rodent model. Uh, we have done this actually uh, now for several years and this particular presentation this, you know, today was, uh, this is the first time that any group that I know has shown that this intestinal uh, piece that we can actually successfully form can actually absorb. So up to now we, have, we and others have been showing the structure looks normal, the villi, the cells, they're organized the way they should be organized, but really nobody could prove that if you put some nutrients in the lumen of the intestine, in this particular new intestine, newly generated intestine, um, that can absorb. And we actually did that with this particular study. We were able to prove that the substance placed into the lumen of this new, you know, newly generated intestinal segment can actually be absorbed in the blood and we find that it is excreted in the urine as well. So it's absolutely physiologic. So that, that is a good step to potentially move forward uh, this field to get closer to, to application in humans. Usually the, the steps are when we start from rodents, we move into a large animal model, basically preclinical uh, large animal model, which is exactly the idea is to, to solve potential other technical issues related to the size and once that is successful based on all the work done in smaller animals then we can move forward and start to attempt something in humans. In humans there are very little treatments in some, in some of these in certain you know, patients uh, there are not very you know, many options uh, available to them. It takes about four months to see 12 weeks we see fully functional and uh, normal looking uh, intestine. Uh, in the stages before that we see some intermediate type of, of situation where we don't expect a lot of function uh, but the intestine is there and the cells are already there but they are kind of forming the different structures that are necessary for the, for the function. So we think the, the fully functional structure will be approximately 12 weeks which is 
not a very long time because these patients can be kept on TPN or other supportive treatments uh, for, for several months. There were some concerns of possible obstruction, motility issues, uh, but we have not seen any problems with small animals. Uh, we envision a larger animal to probably offer less problems uh, because of the size. Uh, but of course that has to be, to be confirmed. But uh, in animal models it works pretty well and there are now several studies done by other groups as well uh, that show that th these techniques can be successful in a very uh, con consistent way. Realistically speaking, the timing could be about three to five years. Of course, it all depends on funding, as everything today in research. Uh, if there is sufficient uh, interest in moving the field forward and uh, getting funded and, uh, and try to accomplish this basically translation into clinical. Usually uh, there is a lot of interest from the government in projects that can be translated into uh, clinical applications in a short period of time. So when we get to the point to, to have all these informations and pieces together, the hope is that we can uh, potentially you know, move forward with NIH support.